Hello and good evening. My name is Josiah Houston and I'm a member of Team Hercules at WPAA-TV. Tonight I am honored to be speaking with our guests, the members of the band The Plain Truth. So now I know each of you have traveled a really long way to be here tonight from a different borough of New York City, so just tell me which borough you came from. Uh, long Island, Bronx, Bronx Brooklyn. Brooklyn. And I'm from Wallingford, but I live in Queens. She's from Queens, and so this is a homecoming for Lorraine. Yes. So welcome home. When did you grow up here just about? Can you give a decade, a, a, a general area when, when you were here? Any decade you want me to. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we have verification that it's some decade it's in the past you were a resident of Wallingford. Yes, I was. So, I was here until I was 17. All right. And what did you leave at 17 in search of? In search of adventure. And also I went to NYU, so I went to New York. Awesome. And yeah. uh, in New York, did you, did you find the adventure you were looking for to a degree? Because you're still there, right? Yes, and I tired New York out, and then I went abroad. I went to L.A., I went to Greece, I went all around, and then I ended up back in New York again. And, and, and came all the way back to Wallingford just Correct. to tire us out a little bit because we've been Absolutely. rested up since you were here last, yes. waiting for your return. <laughs> so I know that you, Lorraine, are an actress and a singer, as we obviously just saw. Yes. Um, but I heard that you were a former police officer for the New York Police Department. <laughs> Correct. So my question is, what inspired this transition from policing to performing? There was no transition. Ah, there we I've go. been, what I am is a singer, that's my anointing, but what I've done in my life has been policing and some other things. But so policing was the day job? But they was the day job, but they also used me to sing. I mean, I sang for like public relations things within oh, the NYPD, because cool. once they found out what I could do, then they started like making me do things it's like, like the, that. The which is okay. Like the DOE. Like the DOE. Once they find out you can do more stuff, you're doing more stuff. That's oh, the rule that's of the game. True. <laughs> so, um, Lorraine, you are the newest member of this group. Correct. So in a little team building exercise, if you bear with me, would you mind introducing uh, the, all of us to the rest of the band and telling us something special about them that makes them someone that you want to spend this time with playing music all the time? Okay. This is jo Jochen. Not, not Jochen. Jochen from Germany. Jochen. And he's cool. He's a bassist extraordinaire. This is Joaf from Israel. And he plays guitar and he's a badass at it. And this is Brian from Long Island, and he's the master drummer so over here. City, oh, there you go. No, I, it's a very important distinction. I'm glad you made it. You are correct. I stand corrected. <laughs> well, we're, we're uh, praying for you out there, uh, hoping that you're making the best of it. Um, for now, I'm going to ask a simple question. Um, the name of the band, The Plain Truth, seems to have an E at the end of the word plain, and I've been told that this is not a typo. It's so my, typo. my question for the rest of the band is, is there an origin story here, or did Brian just really want to get his name in the band of the group? I, 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 guess, that, <laughs> I guess that was all about that. So my last name is Plain, um, and I initially founded the group way back when. Uh, I've been a drummer my whole life, and I had the idea of kind of stepping out in front of the drums. I lived in Los Angeles for a few years, and I wrote some music, and I started singing. Don Henley style, like drummer and singer. Well, I, I started singing and actually came in front, of, kind of pushed the drums aside. Okay. And um, I had this idea in my head to do a, almost like a, a blues type of thing with horns. And my voice is deep and bluesy and have horns. I mean, I had I had. No offense, backup. I would have loved to hear that band too. Well, I had three yeah. backup singers. <laughs> I had a keyboard player, but they right were all on. friends. Uh, eventually, Yoav came along. Uh, we went into the studio to record stuff. And although I loved the group, the way it was set up, and I loved those people very much. It, um, it was lacking something, and there was something missing in the sound. Um, and Yoav was like, you know, let's, let's put something together, you know, really strong. And what and year was this? What, what time <coughs> are we? Man, this was like two years ago, was it? I, I would say about that. You so, guys. I mean, I, I started uh, in around 2004, and, but you came in. 2000. Or six, six right? yeah, he came a little bit after, like and he did and play so with just that. a couple days before you showed up. <laughs> he did play with that arrangement for a while, and it was fun. We we had a good time. We played gigs and we had fun. I actually got to stand next to him and dance a little bit. Yeah, and we had drummers. We had a couple of different drummers, uh, and we kept having issues with drummers. And one day, I think a drummer didn't show up for the studio. And you just and sat down, and I I was like, you know what? I got this. I sat down, and he was like, dude, I had no idea. He's like, come on, this is this like the sound is yeah. there. Let's let's do this. You can. We don't need to wait on anybody else showing up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I started playing drums, and I was I was doing the singing and playing the drums, and um, we we went through a, a couple of different. It was always me and him, but we had different bass players, and um, the Back sound and, and some backup singers, and the sound was coming together. Um, and we, again, had a lot of fun doing it, playing gigs. Recently, um, so for, over the pandemic, obviously, yeah. we didn't do much. 
we weren't playing. We were talking. We were doing some studio stuff back and forth and writing some music. And he said, you know, why don't we try something new? Let's do something new. You're an amazing drummer. Stick to the drums. Let's get a front person with some character, some attitude, some sass. Yeah. Oh, I was and waiting for the sass to come out. He, 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 <laughs> he, he ended up meeting Lorraine and uh, brought me in and uh, very much enjoyed what we were hearing and kind of ready to take it to a, a, a different level. We kind of had done what we were doing. We took it as far as we were going to take right, it. Right, so there was an, another evolution <coughs> the band needed to go through. Obviously, we're no spring chickens. It was time. Let's get a spring chicken in. <laughs> let's get, let's get, get, a, somebody let's get a beautiful young lady in who can <laughs> shake her behind and do what she's got to do. And, and hit the uh, notes. And hit, and hit the, the notes. notes and sing yep. and, and bring it to another level. So this is where we've come to now. Um, yes, it is still the plain truth. Uh, a majority of the music that we have, the songs that we brought forward that Yoav and I have written, now we brought some of Lorraine's music as well. Nice. And kind of uh, molded it to our sound together. And we're continuing to write. Uh, Johan also has got some music that we're going to eventually try to incorporate. And uh, it's, it's a co cooperative band. So no, no, no Beatles left out. No. There's no, there's no Ringo effort. going, why do I only have one song Just on the album? Just because my name is there does not, um, there's no leaders here. We do this all together. And we but, have. but for the record, if you are trying to Google their music or find their website at home, it is The Plain Truth, Plain, P-L-A-I-N-E. -E. E. Yes. Dot com. Dot com. Oh, ThePlainTruth.com. You exactly. don't even have to Google it. Just, just write it all in at once. I think if you don't put the E, it takes you to some biblical site. You don't. You don't. <laughs> which is what, it does. Which is actually, actually the reason why that is a question I put yes. here because I wanted to make sure if anybody was that E is for very you, important. You plain not, Jane, I tell people, plain Jane with an E. If they want to find God, you can do it on your own time. But if you're googling for music tonight, add the E to the end of plain to find the plain truth. On what Brian was saying. So we're very, very happy to have Jochen and Lorraine playing with us, guys. This was Thank fantastic. Yes. We're going to talk about shows later on, but this is awesome. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Well, that you leads directly, oh, pass it to Lorraine, because oh, it yeah? leads directly into my next question, okay. which is you guys clearly have a strong chemistry on stage. Yeah. Um, Brian jumped a little uh, into this already, but when did you first start playing together, and how has the band evolved over the years? Does anybody else, I mean, you gave a great take on that question already. Uh, does anyone else have, I mean, you were there from the beginning as well, about how the band's evolved, where, where you guys have gone with sound, any other? So maybe we'll let Lorraine and, and Jochen take yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, I, I joined actually in July. Oh, just recently in July. Just recently. I, I think like a little bit after Lorraine. Um, so I'm actually the newest You're the newest one. one. I'm the newest one. I did my research <laughs> and I still mess um, up. No, it's, uh, it was like a, I was talking with, with him like for, for quite some time because he wanted to... Why? We wanted to do a, like a cover thing. A right? cover thing, but this did, did not happen. And then he asked me, oh, are you interested in playing originals? So I said, yes. So uh, he invited me in for a sound check, and it was like like this, this instant kind of connection. It was fun, uh, like the, the chemistry between the, the, the different members. I thought there. you guys have been playing together much longer. Yeah, it, it felt it felt very. You guys have well, you guys have are, that, you know, these that guys are so time good. together. No, it's, 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 it's also like like the it has this like professional attitude to it. Like it's not just kind of playing around. You come in to put in the work and put in the effort, but still not forgetting the fun. So it's 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 really a, a nice combination of everything. So the vibe is less um, hobbyist and more craftsmanship, right? More craftsmanship. Correct. That's how I always look, think about it. It's like well, a hobby is something you do for fun, but it's very lackadaisical or leisure. Whereas a craft is something you do for fun, but it's work. It's that, you know, know what? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's craft, obviously, but I think more than anything else, it's just a vibe, right? I mean, we get in a room, you know, we either write something new or we play one of our songs, and it's just, you just ride this wave, you know, of sound and power. It's just amazing. So I think that, this that's... This is a man who enjoys the state of flow, which is definitely yeah, something that every musician that, can speak to, that when you get into that zone and you're like, where's the last two hours gone? That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Once you get in the zone, it's just so <laughs> much fun and that... It's a natural high. Out. You get those endorphins. It's almost better than oxycodone, right? You just see that, that natural feeling. Um, now, you describe your sound on your website, theplaintruth.com, uh, as rock influences with 70s soul. I thought that was a really interesting description, so I'm going to ask you to expound upon it. Um, which artists from these two genres do you feel are most influential um, on the original music you are making today? And you can pass the mic around, uh, give yourselves a second to think, but you know, who's your, who's your rock influence, who's your 70s soul influence? I'm putting you on the spot to see if there's anyone that pops into mind. 
For me, my influence, my big influence, and I only discovered him like five years ago, although I was around for when they were in their head heyday, um, the front man of In Excess, oh, Michael yeah. Hutchins, I discovered him five years ago, and everything that I learned, like the way I move and the way to move on stage and just writing lyrics even, because I used to, in LA, I used to go to his grave site and I used to sit there and write lyrics and clean it off. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So you real, real connection. Real connection. Yeah. I met people and just really connected to that guy. So that's who, who's influenced me. Um, from the 70s, I guess, all the classics, like um, Elton John, Cher, that's another story. But, you know, just different people from like that, but really Michael Hutchins. Okay, Michael Hutchins, great answer. So, so there's a couple of things for me. So first of all, as a drummer, I have to say first and foremost, John Bonham, Led Zeppelin, the man. Um, Second favorite drummer. I, I, God, I don't, I don't think I ever cried so much when, when we lost anybody outside of maybe Chris Cornell, because that's oh. as a singer, that was, uh, yeah. that's, that's my. Um, but God, influence. I, so I have to go quickly back to a story. My first show ever, I'm going to date myself here, uh, Radio City Music Hall. Okay. My mom takes me to see the Jackson Five with the OJs. Nice. And this is my we're, first show. Jealous. I'm not even concerned about what year it is. I'm not as big <laughs> as that star. I mean, okay, yes, I was a tall boy, but I was a little. <laughs> and uh, I remember she got us really good seats. We were down, and they did their thing and they played, and it was great. It was awesome. I got into music, but my mom reminds me that almost, most of the show I stood looking back up at the audience oh, wow. and all the people and was so in awe of what that was like watching this and then little randy jackson came up and did a conga solo and i was like i have to do that i have to do this i remember I that feeling i have, to, I have yeah. to be a rock star and to, to be honest with you i held on to that have to be a rock star as long as i humanly could as a starving artist until it was time to actually become a functioning member of society um but those were like the earliest things I remember. I mean, and then, and then of course, all the bands. I was in, I had hair down to here. We were playing Kiss, Me too, ACDC. Bud. I had hair once, too. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm actually in. You still do. Yeah, I know. Stop. I'm actually still, to be honest, I'm still in a cover band now. We yeah. play all over Long Island. We have a great time, and it's so much fun to do it. But um, those, those bands just coming up, I mean, it, it just kind of came, became who. You, you get molded into the music that you listen to. And my mom listening to Stevie Wonder and all of that great soul yeah. um, just kind of stuck with me when it was time to write and then also put together like some melodies and, and, and also the way I'll sing sometimes. It, 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 it's all a function of all, all of that put together. So that's what it is for me. Awesome. It's a great yeah. answer, brother. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. So I didn't get to see the Jackson 5 because <laughs> I grew up in Tel Aviv. They didn't go there. <laughs> They, they, they definitely they, they, toured in Tel Aviv at some uh, point. I, 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 no, I don't think so. <laughs> well, actually, Tel Aviv was, was, well, I mean, back in the 70s, probably not, you know. Now maybe maybe Michael made it there. Who knows? What Michael did make it there, yeah, by okay. the way. But Michael not, went not, all over the world. Not the, uh, <laughs> no, not the Jackson. But you were only, but Tel Aviv was only 30-some-odd years old at that point, right? No, no, I grew up there. No, I'm saying. The, oh, for, yeah, for no, no, no. This is, this is, <laughs> since 48. No, no, no. It's been, it's been around. Okay, so it's still fairly new. Yeah, fairly new. That's true. Um, so I guess, you know, for me, um, the seventies influence is more Aerosmith and oh, yeah. old Van Halen. And then like Brian's mom, uh, you know, Stevie Wonder, you know, amazing and old. Thanks, yeah. Oh, it's her birthday, by the way. Right. Oh, happy, oh, birthday, happy birthday, Brian Sheila Plain. 80 years old. Awesome. Wow. Love you, mom. Uh, she actually comes to our show. She's amazing. She amazing, amazing <laughs> woman. Absolutely. It's fine. Yeah. So, you know, bring those together. So and, Van Halen um, in the 70s, I mean, that, that changed the game, right? Exactly. Uh, Eddie exactly. Van Halen changed the sound of the guitar for an entire generation. Right. And, they, and, and the entire band, right? I mean, it was Eddie, of course, but then Diamond Dave and all, you know, all the other guys. The good days, the, or the early days of Diamond Dave. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> it was, it was a, a thing, right? A thing that was all together, all these four guys all together. That, that made Van Halen, right? Well, they gelled as that cover. They were the exactly. premier cover band right, right, for right, years. Right. I mean, they, they talked about how they, they got the Kinks albums and they just learned them front to back because playing mm -hmm. Kinks songs live always got you invited back because it's just a good time. Right. And so they learned all those kink songs. I, I'm, I'm, no, Van Halen right. as a cover band was is like, that's how they became who they were, is just went out just, playing the greats over and over Then they changed the game, which was yeah. So I'm a, that, I'm that's a pretty fan. much for me. <laughs> for sure. All right. Um, well, I have to start with Van Halen too, but more like later, um, more like the, the Sammy, Sammy Hager days. Yep. Uh -huh. um, just 
I like it more the musical, and I, I like Sammy as a singer more. No, but I, 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 <laughs> I feel like we're going to lead to some, some future band room yeah. discussions that take you guys off of focus. But yeah. No, not that I don't like the, the, no, uh, the oldest. Old. Um, it's hard to find a bad Van Halen album for those two that's decades. True, that's we true. Have to wait, we have to wait um, the, the, the one with Gary, with Gary from, from Extreme Gary Sharon, yeah. was not, not so funky. By the way, that's a different thing. No, but I, I, I grew up like in, um, my, my dad was a music teacher, so I grew up with like classical music. Then discovered like rock, pop. Like Michael was huge. Like like the in the eighties, you had Michael, you had Madonna, Prince. Well, you played the bass, so was Rick James on the on the playing on that first measure all the time, changing the game a little bit for oh, you. I, or? Not so much Rick James. Um, like I have like a, when I started playing, like I had like a few bass idols, which was like Chaco Pastorius, um, amazing bass player Sting, uh, oh, Paul yep. McCartney. Paul's um, underrated, but he's getting his due lately. He really is these Paul last is, few years is, of his is life. He's such a musical guitar, a musical and, guitar, and, and, and bass player. Those guys, those guys. For not knowing any music. Yeah. I mean, for what, what did um, Quincy Jones say? Those no playing MNFers, right? Those guys who didn't know, really know how to play music, but they created some of the long last. It's, it's, it's crazy how to get from one chord to another. If you don't know, you find a really original way to do it. Yeah. And that's what's the genius of Paul and John. John you right? know, especially with Paul, he, he writes like very catchy bass lines, the ones that you can sing. Uh, and, and I always that that's always what I embrace. I kind of I, I I'm I'm a fan of like making like melodic ba bass lines here and there, uh, and this is like like Paul McCartney Sting. So you got um, that bouncy bass. I can hear what you guys are playing. It definitely like catches your knees before you even. Yeah, hear it, yeah, you know yes, I mean? no, and, and definitely have all the all the the, the, the funk basses like it's just like a big repertoire. Like 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 Haslip from Yellow Jackets is also kind of huge. And um, Flea is an amazing bass player. Flea is an amazing bass player, and <laughs> for sure. He definitely outshines his own playing sometimes. He, but yeah, he's a little bit nuts, but <laughs> it's kind of all right. It's kind of part of the deal, but he's an absolutely incredible musician and bass player. Let me transition to this next question and uh, ask you first, because we started talking about this a little bit before uh, yeah. we, we got on, and I really love the answer you started giving. Um, so as a musician myself, I'm not going to brag a little bit, but I, oh, I played a couple instruments, and I, I definitely feel like I have my own answer to this question. So don't take offense, but I'm going to ask you an obvious question and make you answer it live on camera. So I feel like I know the answer, but for viewers at home, I'm going to ask anyway, what is it about playing music together that inspires you to find the time, to haul your gear, to drive the distance? We're in Connecticut. These are all members of New York City. Um, to put on another show together, uh, that's a lot of effort to put in. So my question, my last big question for you guys before we plug your next tour dates is, what is it that you get out? Well, for me, music was always an important part of my life. Like, I, like music was always there. Music kind of, it's, it's a part of kind of um, putting, putting your, or your emotions and thought into something that you can hold on. And, and it's also like, like a, the band, um, well, this one also in particular, but also like most of my old bands, was always a way to when you when you when you at the end of the day you just um, do something you enjoy, something to to relax, do something to where you just can kind of do something different for for at the end of the day, just kind of escape whatever bothers you. Um, during so like the a day. decompression tool, right? Yes, like it's own, it's it's own personal therapy. You were talking about kind earlier, of yeah. personal therapy. But, but it's more than that. It's not only like a therapy. It's also like a, a way to, exp to express myself, to, to put your, your, your heart and soul into something that, that, that kind of connects with other people. And so so that's, that's, um, that self-expression that yes. is, is nourishment, is daily, is regular nourishment. Absolutely. Awesome. Let, let Lorraine go next. Lorraine. Music, being, <laughs> music literally, in the words of Shakespeare, being food for the soul. Fantastic answer. What about, what about you for yourself? Well, for me, being in a band and music has just been my dream since forever. And being in a live band with great musicians like this one, I mean, it's like I want to tour with these guys like 400 days out of the year, like a buck cherry or something, <laughs> you know, and um, get to Wembley and play in front of thousands of people as far as the eye can see. Or play for one just as equally good because I love being on stage. I just love it and I love live music. I love this kind of thing and 
And that's basically all I ever dreamed of since I was a little girl with a hairbrush in front of the mirror, you know. That specific practice records. in front of the mirror might have been why you were so natural in front of three cameras with yeah. no real audience. So yeah. that, that kind of practice might have actually suited this performance tonight for sure. Because right. it's a different kind of performance when everyone's in the building and you got all that energy yeah. versus there's three cameras and you're hoping someone else on the other side of it paying attention. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very... Uh, a different muted almost, you know, mm -hmm. experience, but it, you still, you get that, that singular feeling of like, somebody's out there. I know somebody's someone's watching, because they are, every time. There's people the out there watching, for sure. <laughs> so what about, what about you, Brian? What is it that you, I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. You know, like I said before, um, when I was young, nothing was gonna stop me, I was gonna be a rock star. And, and like I said, life, life gets in the way, and obviously you have things that you have to do. And now, um, it, it's in my blood, it's who I am. Um, I, and I'm going to do it. They're going to have to pry my decrepit hands <laughs> from the sticks when I can barely hold myself up anymore. And as long as I can possibly do this, I will do it. If I have music in me, if I can strum my guitar or play a piano to write and make sounds and hit the drums and, and, and sing some music, uh, whatever it is, I'm going to do it. It's, it's a love. It's really part of who I am. Um, and then being able to do it in a situation like this, whether it's in the studio whether it's sitting around, you know, noodling, writing some stuff, Yo have and I, or all of us, you know, with acoustics and doing whatever, um, it it pulls you away from uh, a lot of the, uh, the, I guess, a lot of the ugliness and things that we're all obviously experiencing in in the world today, and brings you to a place of of uh, just true zen, and and I'm I'm at home when I'm doing it. I'm home, and it's who I am, and it always will be. And um, like I said, I'm going to do it until I just can't do it anymore. And I hope that's a long time away. I, I feel like I got, I got plenty of rock and roll left in me. I feel like you got plenty of time still left, yeah. absolutely. So, and when those arms go, just move over because he's starting to be singing, and you're not going to yeah. have to do backup at that point. you got about 30 <laughs> years still backup hits. Yeah, so, um, you know, basically based, like what everybody said, I think, you know, especially when you write your own music, mm. when you create, yeah. create a new song, you know, I have two kids, well, love them to death. <laughs> it's a little bit like that, just a little bit, right? You're creating something new that wasn't there before, yeah. right? And especially when you do it in, in, a, in a group a setting, in a setting, team yeah. setting, you know, everyone puts a little bit of their, who they are, right, into that song, and it becomes something that is yours. So how many children have you birthed together at this point? <laughs> <laughs> how many do we have, like 15 or something? <laughs> something like that. Yeah, around just a couple around softball 15. teams, a couple right. softball teams worth of children. And then when you when when you bring when you bring these <laughs> songs, uh, when you bring these songs to an audience and they get it, and you know, you feel the energy going back and forth, Absolutely, and they, yeah. they, they you know they rock out on songs that you wrote. Yeah. It's an amazing feeling. It's nothing like it in the world. There really isn't anything that I've experienced that's like that. It's just seeing fantastic. someone choose to stand up and dance to a song that you yeah. wrote is a. Yeah. Is a Every time you see and, and it, sing it's the, one of you know, sing the lyrics. Choose. When someone gets it. When someone gets it. When someone, I've had that, I had that happen. Yeah, go ahead. Guy came, well, I just got, it was, a, it was a pocket full of soul. So right, right. It's, it's on, if you go to the plane. Track track four on their uh, oh website. Oh, wow, there right. you yeah. go, man. Uh, somebody came up to me after we had played live and was like, dude, I really get that. I, I, was, I got it. And he, like, got all the lyrics and he, he felt it. And, you know, I've written a song, uh, uh, was, we, we played, I did it by myself, and it was an acoustic song, and it was a, a young boy who had just passed away of cancer. And it was called, They Opened Up the Clouds Today. They opened the clouds to let him come back home. And it was a, you know, it was, it was a deep, ballady type of song, and the father came up to me with tears in his eyes and hugging me. And when someone gets your music, like deeply gets it, there is no, I mean, that feeling is just... Connection's a hell of a drug. Yes. Yeah, human it, connection it, is a hell of a drug, amazing. and music really is, a, is. is a medium for connection. Yes. Yeah, expression, connection, therapy, all the things that it gives us, we're, we're lucky that it's uh, here for us on this little blue marble that keeps spinning in black space. Um, so here's my last question before, before we disappear into the black space void of the, uh, the TV. Now that live performance is safely making a comeback. I know we were doing um, fireside, uh, fire escape sessions all throughout the pandemic. So we have this uh, 
the, the door you guys came in through our fire escape door. We were having musicians come in, come in, set up, and everyone's back there, no contact. They set up in front of the cameras, they play, because there was no live music, but we were able to provide live music to the community from all over Connecticut, because these musicians, they wanted to play, they wanted to keep sharing and keep connecting, but they didn't have an avenue to do it. So we had these wonderful you know, sessions over and over and over again throughout the pandemic, but now, Live performance is coming back. People are actually vaccinated and going out and yes. safely spending time yep. together to, to share that energy again. So I'm going to give you a chance here to plug what plans the Plain Truth has for the post-pandemic future. Excuse me. Are there any shows in the area that we should know about? Well, not quite the area. We'll, we'll Tri-state area. Yeah. Tri-state area, yes. <laughs> uh, we actually would love uh, to, to get up this way and play. We're, gonna, we're actually going to talk about that and, and uh, see what venues are available to us and, and make our way up, up here to... Uh, to Lorraine's hometown. Um, next gig coming up is on the 18th of November. It's a Thursday. Um, it's at a place called KJ Farrell's in Belmore, which is a great place, a um, lot of fun. And we're going to do a quick set there, probably uh, an hour, you know, just do, just run about eight to ten songs. And then uh, there is a live band karaoke after that where uh, a band actually gets up and plays the it's rock and roll that's fun. And they play and it's a lot of fun yeah uh, i imagine both lorraine and myself will maybe get up there and maybe and some, some duets fun. yeah some have some McDonald's. fun with that and I, i'll get to i'll get to rock out a little bit up front she'll she'll do some stuff that she doesn't do with us and it'll be a lot of fun and any other singers out there come down it's a great time uh after that we're in the city yeah. uh on the 20th actually two days later that's a saturday that's a saturday right yeah it's a saturday night a little easier to make the trek down. It's in Harlem at a place called The Shrine. Oh, yeah. That'll be at 9 o'clock. Again, it's about 45 to an yeah. hour. Um, really cool place. Quick set, yeah. really cool place. It's a music, it's like a cultural center almost. I mean, it's a re yeah. really great vibe. Um, I don't think we have anything else for gigs booked. Uh, no, that's it for now. We're working on it. Again, yeah. we'd I'm like to... to get stuff and today. if you need to hear it again or read it, because he <clears throat> has said too fast, at the very end of the show, just remember the plaintruth.com, P-L-A-I-N-E. Guys, it was so wonderful having you here at Thank you uh, Studio W. Thank you very it's much. It's an absolute yeah. pleasure, Thank and we you. hope that when you come back to Wallingford, you come back and you let us know where you're going to be so we can send we more people out will. to hear you. We'd love to. Awesome. Thank All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you at home. You have a Peace wonderful out. night. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you. That was so good. That was Appreciate awesome. it. Yeah, I appreciate it.